Andrew, what I can tell you is what the Civilian Complaints and Review Commission is going to do. It is the independent federal watchdog that looks at the RCMP and decides whether its conduct was appropriate. And in this case, they've decided there's enough information that they want to conduct their own investigation mm -hmm. of the RCMP's investigation. Looking at what the RCMP officers who arrived at that farm in a remote Saskatchewan, what they did, the way they did it, their procedures, particularly uh, looking at things like the way they gathered evidence, the way they informed the family about his death. So there are a number of things that they will look at. But interestingly, when I look at the, the terms of reference that this hearing will take place, they're saying whether the investigation was conducted reasonably. Also, whether any RCMP members involved in this matter carried out any form of discrimination on the basis of race or perceived race, that will be information that will be particularly interesting for the family of Colton Bushi to hear, for his mother, his uncle, for the lawyer who, who helped represent them during this trial. They have argued that the, the investigation carried out by the RCMP was substandard. They have argued that it should have been better, and they sp point to specific instances. Instances, in fact, that we at CBC have been looking into at the same time as the independent watchdog is now announcing its own mm -hmm. investigation. So has there been any reaction from the RCMP? The RCMP at this point say they can't comment on any of it because we're still in that appeal period. Gerald Stanley, the man who was accused and found not guilty, uh, we are now in this 30-day period where the Crown could come back and appeal uh, that case or make mm -hmm. an application to appeal. But you know, this is not looking at the trial. It is not mm -hmm. looking at the outcome of the trial. It is looking at that investigation. And when I look at the number of things that we have found, by bringing some of the evidence presented at trial to outside homicide investigators, they will use words like sloppy, negligent, and unacceptable to describe some of the procedures and practices of the RCMP during this investigation. Just one example, and there are many, mm -hmm. but just one example is that Colton Bushi uh, was shot and killed inside a vehicle. His body fell outside of that vehicle. There was a significant amount of blood. But when our CMP officers arrived on the scene, they did not cover that vehicle. They did not protect it. And 44 millimeters of rain fell, washing away a significant amount of blood evidence. Blood spatter experts who we've spoken to say that is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. They say that it, it is inconceivable that an officer would not have preserved the crime scene. That's just one example of many uh, that homicide investigators have raised with us. And, and we've also heard from the family who say that they they were not treated properly when the announcement of Colton Bushy's death was made to them. We certainly have, and that is one of the things that the CCRC, this watchdog, is looking into and what in many ways prompted them. Because what happened was when Colton Bushy was shot and killed, according to his mother, who was living on the Red Pheasant Reserve at the time, very remote Saskatchewan, seven or eight police cars surrounded the home that she was in. Officers came in, told her her son was dead, while at the same time conducting a search for a man they say may have been inside with a gun. And that's prompted questions from the family, like if you thought there was a guy in the house with a gun, why didn't you take us outside of the house? Mm -hmm. Why did you tell us that, that uh, my son was dead and then immediately leave? Why did you, uh, according to Debbie Baptiste, ask whether I was drunk or not? Why did you have to search for Colton Bushy's dinner in the microwave? So they have a lot of questions. And the CCRC is going to be there in many ways to try to answer it. Their powers, they make recommendations and findings. It goes to the Minister of Public Safety. If the RCMP chooses not to follow them, they have mm -hmm. to defend to the government why they aren't. And this is all, you know, taking place in Saskatchewan at a time where there has been a lot of talk about the racial divide that mm -hmm. exists in that province. Just last night in Bigger, there was... Uh, you know, a discussion that took place and a lot of it focused on rural property rights and this has brought up some of those some of those divisions that mm -hmm. exist in that province. And there is uh, there is little debate amongst those who are involved in this case that the people who were in that car, not all of them necessarily, but at least some of the people who were in that car on the night of this shooting were up to no good. The, the question though is what transpired on the farm? And, and how was it that Colton Bushy was shot and killed? Gerald Stanley, the man who was accused, who was found not guilty in this case, it was long his explanation that he had a handgun and that it experienced a hang fire. Essentially, he pulled the trigger, mm -hmm. nothing happened for several seconds, and while he was almost inside the vehicle that Bushy was in trying to remove the keys, at that point, the round exited the chamber, struck Mr. Bushy, and ultimately killed him. Uh, a lot to watch for on this story, but David, thank you. That is the CBC's David Common.